Uh, good morning and welcome to episode 53 of Talking to Artists. Uh, first of all, I just want to really apologize because last week's episode, even though we did it twice with Paula White Diamond, um, we for some reason I was not able to save it and I'm not sure why. I don't know if it was a setting at her end or my internet or whatever. So anyway, uh, we're going to try and do it when we get a chance, um, maybe in the next uh, few months or something. <laughs> it was kind of hard to do two in a row. Anyway, um, just want a couple things I wanted to uh, remind you about. I've also just uploaded the um, the Talking to Artists is now on my podcast, Talking to Artists, which you can find on any of your Spotify or Apple podcasts. And I just uploaded the one of uh, Andrew Chetty Sucra. So he was on the Landscape Painter of the Year contest. I also was met him actually in China, an amazingly colorful, beautiful uh, painter. So if you want to hear all about his journey, then it's now on the podcast. And I uploaded Jenny Lynn James's last week. So we're trying to get caught up, but since we're now at episode 53, that will take a while. Um, so today we are going to be talking to uh, Jackie Gortzman of Gortzman's Art Supplies. So I think probably the, she can tell me, but I'm thinking probably one of the oldest um, art supply companies in, uh, in Toronto. And uh, let me just see if she is here. Yeah, looks like she has joined and I am going to chat with me. And we will hope that it'll save and we'll have no problems. Hey, how are hey. you? Good morning. Good morning to you too. <laughs> <laughs> so I see you've got the pink and I've got the, the blue going on. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's great. <laughs> I know. Isn't the best thing about that if worst comes to worst it doesn't really turn out? Like no one's going to see you in real life for like another couple months anyway. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm hoping that they're going to see me in the next couple of months, but I get to change the color every time I want to. <laughs> yeah, that's, true. that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I just uh, was you know, reading a little bit about, uh, you know, there's a great article in Blog TO about the history of Gortzman's and stuff. And, you know, obviously you walk into the store and you have that feeling of the fact that it's really established. It's been here for a long time. Um, but I hadn't realized that you've been around since the 1950s. Yeah, we've been around for a long time in, in different ways. Um, the store is actually over 100 years old, the building itself. Uh, I try to find out as much as possible. There's little things in the store that I don't know if people have noticed that I've seen over the years. But, you know, there's a lot of paper trails to go through to find the actual history of what was here when it first started. But I know the building itself was from about 1896. Wow. And uh, my grandparents bought it in about 1945. Um, and I've tried to find out who owned it before them. And it's it's a long kind of, uh, it's a lot of work. I haven't had time to do just yet. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we've been, <laughs> yeah, we've been in this area for a very, very long time. I mean, from the story, my father grew up in the neighborhood. So, um, I mean, technically I grew up in the neighborhood. I was living in our uh, building when I was born. My parents didn't move out until I was about two years old. So even part of our warehouse was actually my living space. Uh, wow. So it's, yeah, so it's kind of crazy that I've lived in the Spadina area for a good part of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it always feels like home. Yeah. Well, you know, the other thing is I just, one of the things I love about it, um, is when I walk in, it, for some reason, it reminds me of my grandparents. It reminds me of history. And I think it's just that creaking of the floors and the smell of the wood. And yeah. something you just can't get with a modern store, which I just, uh, I don't know, it's just how it just makes you feel more creative as you're walking in the door somehow. <laughs> I think so. And, you know, it's funny. People will walk in and they'll say, there's a smell. There's a smell in here. And I, I'm not exactly sure all the time what they what they're talking about. But there's there is something, I think, because I've been in here for so long that I don't always detect I mean I could smell the beeswax I can sometimes smell some of the oil paints um but it's it's uh it, it's a very homey feeling yeah and you know that smell is probably it's so ingrained so deeply in your brain you don't see it in the same way that my mother has a British accent and when people okay. talk to me you don't hear the accent right <laughs> you know that woman with the British accent I'm like I didn't hear it <laughs> you just don't hear yeah. it anymore yeah it's true and so your your parents started the show, right? started it, or did your grandparents? Well, my grandparents were in the drapery business. Uh, technically, years ago, they probably would have called it the schmata business. It was uh, fabrics and 
draperies. My father went into the business as a young man and developed it into a drapery business. So we had fabrics, but a lot of it was geared towards draperies. And uh, he's the one that sort of developed, really pushed that part of it. So he was supplying not only people making their own drapes, but also a lot of the apartment buildings. And uh, he worked very hard. We used to go with him on trips when he was in, doing installations and, and things like that. So it was, uh, you know, we had a different business before we started in art materials. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, being in this area uh, for so long, this in the 19... 60s started becoming an area for very cheap rent it was great for artists and uh you know they we had artists living all around here these were all apartments uh years ago my father rented to a few artists who lived above the store here so mm -hmm. it's it was a very artist neighborhood uh very very cool that i of course don't remember at the time i was too young but um you know, when my, my father was a, a really easy guy to talk to for them. And of course, being open and you have an interesting store, they'd come in and ask him for fabric, which was obviously not what we carried at the time. But my father knew enough about fabric that he sort of understood what they were looking for. And I mean, I have memories because I was coming in uh, for you know, as a young age, and we always had the blue line and the red line canvas. And it was always five feet wide. At the time, you couldn't get everything that we could get now, but five blue line and red line. So it was, uh, you know, er early memories of us just stocking some of the things that artists were using at the time. Hmm. And so what made the transition to kind of go from something that was kind of more draperies and fabrics into full time artists? That's quite the jump. I mean, you know, to make sense, that's a jump to kind of change the whole business model. Well, you know, being in the area and being asked for the canvas, it, it was just the natural questions would be, well, if you've got the canvas, you need paint. And then if you need paint, you need brushes. And then it sort of develops to find out what the things are using. Uh, my father was a... Uh, my father liked to ask a lot of questions and so that's how he developed some of the knowledge and at the time uh, there weren't as many art stores uh, mm -hmm. he was going to some of the art shows we only have one big art show at the time which was always in the United States and my father went to ask some questions I mean we were the first people to stock a brand named Utrecht uh, it was a very uh, it was manufactured by this family in the United States. Um, ultimately, they're now, they became an art supply store, you know, of a chain, and now they're part of Dick Blick. But at the time, they were mm -hmm. an, an independent. And so we stocked their pain, and my father uh, spoke to Dela Rowney, and so we were the first to stock Rowney's oils in Canada, and we had the pastels and the whole line. So you, you know, he asked a lot of questions, but he wanted to be different. So he looked for product that were, that was not necessarily available here in Toronto and artists were willing to experiment and try things. And we had, you know, contemporary art was just really beginning. So there was a lot of experimentation going on with so many different things. I remember, you know, like one shot paints and uh, enamels and all kinds of, you know, things that we sort of have adapted to now was newer at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, and, and you learn by osmosis. You you talk to people, and that's how we, we still do that. We, we're still, you know, talking to people to find out what is of interest, what things are new, what's happening. Suppliers only can tell you a certain amount. Um, you really have to ask a lot of questions. So well, suppliers tell you what you want to hear as a, as a vendor, but not necessarily what uh, the end customer is going to hear, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah we've learned that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because I didn't, I don't know if you knew, but my, uh, my mother grew up in England and her parents, my grandparents were also were in the drapery business. Oh, and, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So they were in a small town in Milton Hall and they had kind of like this, it's almost like a bit of a general store. And I remember, I mean, you know what? I think that's why I love Portsmouth. It reminds me of that same place. It's that same creaky floors and stuff like that. But they had one area that was drapery and fabrics and stuff. Sure. And then they had another area that was like hardware and bicycle repair. And then they had, art supplies as well oh wow oh that's yeah. so cool you know it's <laughs> funny that you say that um my i found a photo uh that my mom had my grandparents on my mother's side owned a paint store in byward market 
Uh, oh. So, yeah, oh. so that was one of my grandfather's uh, businesses. So it's like I came from this, you know, into this <laughs> naturally from two sides, you know, what my father started and what my, my grandparents had started on the other side so many years ago. It's just mm -hmm. uh, kind of cool history for me to uh, keep track of. Yeah. And so you're the third generation to run Wurtzmans? Or are you um, it, well, I guess it would be third. Technically, in art materials, it's second. Uh, yeah. But third in the family business. Yeah. And then your daughter, I was reading, is uh, looking to maybe follow you in the family business? I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. But you never know. You know, everything is, is different these days. Uh, I always say to my kids, if they were going to be involved in the business, I want them to do something different than what I did. I mean, I learned about business from uh, my father. I was fortunate. I mean, growing up in the business, you, you learn a lot of things. And I think one of them was to just be able to talk to people and, and find out what their interests are. Um, you know, learning about online was a whole new thing for me. Uh, I mean, in COVID, oh, wow. wow. Drag kicking and screaming into that one. <laughs> wow. My daughter was, uh, it was great having her because she was the computer genius during all of this and uh, helped us with the online and we kept things going that way. So it's, it's true. If, my, if I've told, as I say, my kids, I don't know what their futures are, but if they did, they would be looking to see how they could do something different or, or make it better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's always kind of the nice thing, but I also loved, I think it was your, your father's uh, kind of concept of you can't have a great day, you have to make a great day. And presumably that is doing something every day that you really love and you get something from and you have passion for. You know, my father always said it was it to him. It would be if it would be time to get out if it was no longer fun. You know, I think that's for anybody in, in any mm -hmm. kind of business, whether you're, you know, even artists. Sometimes you need to take a break and try something different and decide if it's good for you. And yeah. uh, my dad, you know, always said if you get out when it's no longer fun. And to be honest with you, I never heard him say it was no longer fun. I mean, for anybody that knows him, he was here almost every single day up until the day he passed away so yeah. it was it was just like a home away from home and you know it's it, it's true I think for anybody as long as you love what you're doing you try to look for different ways to enjoy each day and yeah and that's of it. Of challenges and hard times along the way but I think that the the overall arching concept of loving your business is that there's something you get out of it that's more important than not doing it yeah yeah, yeah. I mean I still yeah. love it yeah, for sure. Like, you know, it's funny because as I was reading too, I just kind of, uh, I didn't stupidly, but clue in that, of course, your father's name, I guess his first name was Paul, right? Like he was Mr. G like, to everybody, right? And I kind of remember when going in there, you know, when I'd say, I'm just going to pop into Gortzman's. I'm like, no, I can't just pop in. That never happens. So I always end up having a long conversation and talking yeah. to different things. And an hour later, I finally go. But yeah, like for sure, he was always there. Yeah. And I remember my, uh, my mom, actually, she did, uh, she was doing, um, batik and batik silk sure. scarves and, stuff. and someone said oh you have to go to Gortzman's to get silk because that's a good place to get it yeah uh, at that time and I guess when she went in because her name is the same as my grandmother's my grandmother was an artist in Montreal um, I guess Mr. G recognized the name because my grandmother I guess I don't know she used to come in occasionally and buy materials good. or something yeah it's, so it's probably yeah, possible together Jackie <laughs> <laughs> we have a history <laughs> we do <laughs> It's like being on those ancestor shows and finding out we're cousins. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> we'll have to look into that. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, talking about pivoting, I think that you guys have pivoted really quickly, and not unlike a lot of the other art stores that have had, you know, like presumably corporate behind them and people responsible for doing all that stuff. I mean, that all has to be the same people that are doing the ordering and the supplying and the cash and customer service, right? Yeah. Yeah, we've, we've, uh, I'm very proud of my staff. I've been uh, very, very proud of them. And they all have helped us in different ways, uh, whether it be setting up our website uh, originally and getting things going, uh, testing new product. I mean, which I absolutely love having them try out everything because it's amazing the feedback that I get from them, uh, getting mm -hmm. things up on the website. Um, you know, we, we love to, uh, you know, agree to disagree on what we want to bring in. Um, we just did a survey, so it was a real eye opener. We get to talk about, you know, what the comments are that have come back to us and what people are, you know, talking about. Um, but yeah, it, it's been a very, very interesting time with with COVID. And, and you know, it's funny, you had to get used to not uh, seeing people, 
And what we found was, you know, we had a lot of people just calling when we were closed and, and still do because you just want to talk to someone. You want to connect. I mean, it's it's different when you can't actually go in the store and ask a question to someone in a store and say, how do I use this? What is it for? What's this color really like? Online does mm -hmm. not do anything justice. I mean, yeah. you know, it helps, but it's not great. Um, so we've pivoted to doing like virtual appointments so we can talk to people. Uh, we can't wait to see people. I, I think, you know, all of us, we just want to get out. I mean, even the art shows, I, yeah. as much as I can handle the virtual, it's just, <laughs> I want to go. I want to see something. I'm interested in how, in your virtual meeting. So how does that work? Like if I'm an artist, I'm, because one of the things I've noticed as an artist is because I have to order everything online, I tend to order the same things I've always ordered. So for me, there's been uh, quite a bit less experimentation of like, oh, that looks kind of cool, or that looks like fun, and maybe I'll try it just because you don't see it, right? Because you're not in there. So how do your virtual meetings work? Well, what happened, uh, we set it up. Um, I'd actually seen, you know, some of the jewelry stores. I don't know how you buy jewelry also through a virtual appointment, but I thought it was yeah. a great idea just so that actually we could talk to people. So it's the same thing as a phone call. It, it's even more difficult with a phone call because you can't really describe anything. So at yeah. least if someone had questions about what, uh, what does this look like or what colors or uh, the same color in a few different products, we could actually show it to them again computer is a little bit more difficult but it's also that connection to see someone just like you and i are talking it's the same idea mm -hmm. as a virtual meeting we're just mm -hmm. being able to connect you know virtually to see somebody i really think it makes a difference in in just a little bit more of a, a human connection than talking on a phone i mean i love talking on the phone i have no problem with that but really to see a, a color or to see a tube or anything it's it is more difficult it it really does not change what you want to do in person but it, it's one step closer to it yeah yeah i agree and it's been so long i think that definitely helps keep people oh. connected to the community yeah yeah and i actually i love your uh, i love your instagram posts too like not yeah. only the the studio artist studios is really cool but also the kind of the demos you do and you kind of go through a lot of that stuff so you do an amazing job at that <laughs> <laughs> I, I've gotten used to, you know, I don't know, I give you a lot of credit. I love watching what you do because you're just so natural with it. And it's it's one thing to be able to talk to someone again to see them when I'm talking to a, a camera. I just <laughs> stop thinking about it. I used to be so nervous about it. And I really just stopped thinking I, I know what I like to talk about and really art materials. I you know, like the back of my hand. I don't use mm -hmm. all of them. I've played with them, but I take a really objective view of what I think would be great for people to know about it. And that's what makes it easier for me just to sit and talk. And and I'm always telling people, you know, or when I'm talking, I'll say, you know, I could just talk for hours because I know what I think I want people to get out of it, but it's, it's a little difficult that way. I, I just hope that my passion or my you know, excitement about seeing something new is just uh, always portrayed. I think so. <laughs> but oh, I, uh, think I think that comes through. But I think the other thing that, for me that comes through with them is you actually really take the time uh, with the close ups of the materials. I was just happened to be watching the ones you did recently on the uh, the pens, the calligraphy pens and stuff. So to kind of see the nibs and explain the nibs and you so you, as a viewer, you have enough time to actually be able to process it because it's a lot of stuff is new, right? So some of these things are so fast, you're like, whoa, what happened? Yeah, and you know what? There is a lot of product that has been around for a long time. And unfortunately, I don't think we've ever had time as retailers to spend it just <laughs> talking about the virtues of everything. You know, there's a lot yeah. of things that have been around a long time, like you said, pen nibs. They've been around a long time, but do people really understand pen nibs? No one's really ever, you know, spent time. Our suppliers would never have made videos at the time just to explain how you use it, why you want to use it, why do you want to try it. Um, it's just mm -hmm. like all the virtues of all the different paints and mediums and things like that. So it's uh, it's kind of fun that way, but it, I get overwhelmed because there's always to me so much to talk about. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot out there too. Like I think that's there's the a lot. Thing too. As an artist, sometimes if you like, oh, you go on YouTube, and I'm like, yeah, I could spend like seven days being sucked into the tunnels of YouTube. Sometimes it's nice just to have one source. Yeah, and I do, I myself get caught up doing that. I mean, even on weekends, I, I always say to my family, I'm going down the rabbit hole again. I, I'm finding <laughs> so many uh, different things. And 
And I've been to trade shows. I mean, I we are fortunate to go to a couple different ones. I've been to a big one that's usually in Frankfurt, Germany, uh, where we support we see suppliers, we see retailers from all over the world and connect that way. It is a, what we see here is only a very small portion of what's available in the world. I mean, some of it is repetitive. It's not always what we need mm -hmm. to have extra. There's, there's hundreds of thousands of brands of this similar items, but it's really nice to see the variations and what's big in Europe or what they tend to do and what we do here and, uh, I've been to some of the shows over in Hong Kong. I haven't been to parts of, I've been to one in China. I haven't been to some of the other ones, but it's absolutely fascinating. Hmm. Yeah, well, I especially imagine China because they have so much of a history too of the, more the pen and inks and the washes and, you know, it's a quite a different, typically a very different style. I mean, that I've certainly seen it from from North America, but also even from Europe, like in terms of how they use the materials. Yes, my brother has spent a lot of time over there. So he's seen and visited a lot more artists. When I was there, it was really more of a business. So I didn't get to see as much. My um, hope is one day that I'll be able to go back and just spend a longer period of time just, just doing that, just visiting studios and more of the art supply stores, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. That'd be cool. And so how do you how do you ultimately decide then? I mean, it must be a bit overwhelming when you see all these cool things. It must be super exciting. And you get really excited about it. But how do you ultimately make the decision that, yeah, that's cool, but it doesn't belong in my store. And that one, I think, will. Well, it's funny that you say that. Uh, we were always very we, we've always been very loyal to our suppliers um, and we have always stood behind products that we carry but that doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of great products out there as I say we just did this big survey and we got back some great feedback uh, I'm being a little bit more experimental in what we're trying uh, so we're expanding certain areas of the business that we were always tending to stay away from uh, so you know I keep telling uh, every time I do the live oh my god we got something new again <laughs> and over the probably over the next six months there's going to be a lot more product um, I don't know where we're going to put it. We've looked into new <laughs> well, we've looked into new shelving. Uh, I'm waiting to find out about that. But uh, you know, it'll be. I have no idea where we're going to put it. I honestly don't know. But it's very <laughs> exciting. Some things that you know we've had uh, custom requests, and some things as I say that we want to just try and experiment with and see what what the response will be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess that's also what makes people keep coming back, right? Because I mean, if you can order so. your supplies online, I mean, because people are going to be much more used to that now. But, um, you know, I think if you can go into one of the things about going to an art store, I think is part of the discovery, right? Of what are you going to find and how can you try and think about incorporating that into your work? And yeah, that's, you know. that's also our goal is just to show how you can use so many, uh, how can you can use products differently, how they all sort of some things, not all, will interconnect. So products mm -hmm. that you may use for sculpture, you may actually be able to use with your acrylic painting or um, new mediums that you can use with your watercolors and uh, sculpture of all kinds. It's, it's, um, it's always interesting to me to see how things, it, things that we think beyond what we're typically used to seeing it used for. Right, yeah. And I know, I don't think I know, but are you an artist? Do you paint or do you just Not play? at all. <laughs> I play, I play. I'll admit to playing. I'll admit to testing out uh, different products. I have an absolute uh, respect for artists that, oh my gosh, the the way that they can use materials and take chances and, you know, go with an idea and talk about their art. I, I have the, uh, I'm in awe, let's just say every <laughs> single day. But what I like about what I, my part is, is that I can take that objective view of what I'm looking to buy. So as an artist, you may be used to a certain product and how it works. And I may say, you know, you may want to look at this other one, which I think is going to do this for you. Or you may try this other brand that's, you know, sort of on the cusp of something different. And, you know, I can take an objective view because I know how they work, but mm -hmm. I haven't, you know, I've played with it. I've seen how it's used. I, I think I've gotten used to doing that uh, pretty well in my well, I say my experience. <laughs> no, that would be pretty cool, though, to sort of maybe recommend something to an artist and see them incorporating it into their style, and then that becomes sort of part of what their, you know, what their brand is, right? I mean, that's a pretty neat thing to be part of, all a little tiny piece of all of these piece, artists' inspiration and growth. 
Yeah, no, I, I like the way artists are, are willing to try. A lot of them are. I mean, you yourself, I know, try a lot of, you use a lot of different brands. You're always looking to try something different in a surface, mm -hmm. uh, experimenting. I, I think that's the whole idea. I think that's the great part of, I think, nowadays. And I think that also is what COVID has uh, shown people is that they can try different uh, things. They can experiment a little bit. Um, you know, our suppliers don't always have something. So you try something new. Um, uh, yeah. Someone's, I think you've got some comments coming in. I think I know, you're popping up. To, <laughs> we'd love to keep expanding uh, with more hard to get supplies. Yeah. So that's, well, I think that's kind of what sounds like it's the plan, right? But of course, you know, where you started off, you were in a super inexpensive, cheap area that had artists, but not, not so much any longer, right? No, <laughs> so, no. Your it's, physical space. it's still a cool area. I mean, it, it, to me, this is, uh, downtown is still very, very exciting. And Kensington Market, the whole area has just has so much history. Um, but that's part um, of what we're trying to get people to know about us is just that we're not just a physical store. I mean, what we what we sell behind the scenes or what we're shipping to across Canada right now is really part of our story is that we've always been involved in uh we've always been involved with artists i mean my dad had uh, he was he had people visiting him from all over the world I, i've met people from so many different countries that have come in that had heard about us or where we were we weren't always able to ship to them obviously but when they'd come to toronto they were coming to see us and um you know i i just i love the way that people have adapted uh even during covid to still being able to create. Of course, I thought that uh, art materials were an essential service, but I- I totally it, agree. <laughs> I, I really think it would have been great for more people to understand that there was an outlet for them uh, during all of this. I'm glad that people were still creating. I, I mean, I, I think that that's part of why we were still doing our Instagram chats because I wanted people to understand, like, just keep doing what you're doing. Don't, don't stop. Uh, it's it's just really really important. I, I we've had supply issues. I, there's been all kinds of stuff going on behind the scenes. But you know, don't try and adapt to what the circumstances are, and it, it will all come back. But you know, just yeah. don't stop. But I think you're right. Like, and it, and it was it's interesting about you know your comment of being an essential service because on the one hand, especially at the beginning, it was very much like you know we need to embrace music and we need to embrace art and we need to start baking bread and all of these things, which, you know, of course, if you want to bake bread, you can go to the grocery store where things yeah. are open. And yet on one hand, they're kind of saying, be creative and do take this time to be creative and really build into it. But unless you happen to have a bunch of art materials in your corner of your house, like it was hard to get them, right? And especially if you're then on top of that, not sure what to get. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, yeah, it is unfortunate that they kind of didn't have that as a, as a essential service. Yeah, and I don't think they think food. about it as an essential service. They they want people to do it, but they don't think it's uh, it, it's just a mindset. I mean, we've seen it yeah. with so many different things. Well, for sure. And I think, you know, for, for me as like any artist, you know, getting certain supplies, you know, it's kind of, in some ways, it sort of pushed you out of a rut. Uh, like I was saying, I tend to buy the same things, especially now that it's online. But then equally, sometimes you can't get those things. And, right. Uh, you know, there's one company, I just loved some of their colors, and they now don't produce acrylic paints at all, right? So it's kind of... This piece I'm working on right now, I'm trying to reproduce it with paints that don't exist anymore, you know, so you kind of have to then be creative and figure out what to do with it. Yeah, I think that that's another thing that we've had in our industry. There's been a few changes as far as suppliers, but I think it, it will take some time. I mean, for everything, it's going to take time. It'll all come back. There'll be all kinds of, you know, uh, not this year, next year, probably there'll be possibly new things coming down the pipe. But uh, even our suppliers are just nobody's really producing anything new this year at all uh, right. they're all trying to keep going yeah and so are you seeing any um any kind of interesting trends or things like that that you think are going to kind of come up within the art world and sit with uh, well i was thinking about that and i i actually was thinking about it the day i saw you talking about rug hooking <laughs> <laughs> so you know in, in art materials i haven't seen any new trends yet uh to me everything old is new again so a lot of the products sort of like rug hooking that were may have been popular years ago um, I see coming back and coming back used a little bit differently but even stronger so for instance I think watercolors have taken a huge surge uh, they were always popular but I think people were generally afraid of them uh, afraid to try them 
Uh, but now people are willing to experiment. They're not afraid to test them. It's used, being used for urban sketching, uh, plein air. So it's opened up, I think, a whole new way that uh, artists or anybody interested in painting are willing to experiment with watercolor. I mean, there was always a bit of trepidation going in with watercolors. Um, you know, yeah. acrylics. Yeah. Well, I think I always found too, watercolors are intimidating, right? Because of the fact yes. that you need know, to get that soft look. And I'm actually introducing, or I'm inter interviewing an artist in a few weeks who is a watercolor artist, but she works Ooh. with very strong, dramatic color, which is kind of different than you normally would sure. traditionally think of watercolors. Sure. No, I, I, as I say, I think that's just been a, a huge change. We're noticing that uh, matte finishes are coming back. So that's been uh, interesting. Um, you know, acrylics really haven't changed. New colors may be coming in, uh, but nothing really uh, groundbreaking just yet. Um, mm -hmm. But as I say, I see strong, like related to watercolors, I see gouache, again, been around for a long time, been around yeah. forever but now being used in a different way, coming back with more interest in, in how to use it. Even pens, you know, certain pens are coming back. It's just, I think everything to me, as I say, everything old is new again. And people are being able to rediscover products that have actually been around a long time, but maybe they never thought about it or hadn't seen it demonstrated, hadn't seen it used. So mm -hmm. um, I, I like that part of it. I like the idea that, that the, uh, you know, the, everything that we were always excited about are being discovered, but maybe discovered in a new way or by a younger person that's trying them out for the first time and saying, wow, I never knew this was around. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I guess with acrylics, probably one of the biggest changes seems to be the, um, like the move from, I was reading your blog post about uh, vermilion and, and blues and reds and stuff about how you know, obviously a lot of that stuff is fairly toxic and then the cadmium kind of comes in and now there's cadmium free, which I'm still torn because I really think the cadmium yellow is nicer than the cadmium free yellow, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah. But uh, So that must be something you're also kind of um, pretty aware of in terms of um, the safety of some of these materials. It is, it is. And, you know, they really are trying with art materials to make them safer. Um, they're not all, as we know, environmentally friendly. So they do offer, we're, that's something we're actually looking into is just seeing how we can work with that in our industry. But the idea of the cadmiums going out, that's been talked about for probably about 15 years now, um, mm -hmm. that we knew 15 years ago that cadmiums, they were potentially going to be getting phased out. A lot of companies still haven't uh, change them and I, I completely understand why. There's always been alternatives like some of the uh, uh, opaque colors. They don't have maybe exactly the same intensity but there are alternatives to cadmiums on the market but uh, I think it's I think it's a positive change. It's going to take time to convince artists that they may have to just look at it a little bit differently and I'm sure and you know, anything new, they always redevelop it. So I'm sure whatever is maybe weak now, they're going to be, you know, probably improving over the years. I probably give well, yeah, it at least another that's five years. That's why it took 15 years, right? Because I mean, to try, you don't want to kind of lose that intensity of color, but if you're using, you're taking out one of the key ingredients, then it's going to take a while to develop that. And it's yeah. Kind of yeah. science around it. Yeah. And do you carry, you carry your own products as well, right? We do. We do. Yeah. We've always carried a, a different private label brands um, of our own under either, originally it was under the master's name, which was uh, one that we used so we could use it for distribution. And uh, I guess a number of years ago, I had said to my dad, I think it's time that we use our own name. <laughs> so we started switching over. So some things are under our own Gordon's label. Some things are under our new art uh, label. Um, you know, I'm sort of developing more products that will be under our name. I'm pretty particular because, you know, it's very easy to make everything under your own name and you can make it as cheap and cheery as you want. But since I stand behind the products that we've always carried with someone else's label, I'm going to do exactly the same thing with ours. So it takes me a lot longer because I have to sit and, you know, play with the play with the sketchbooks and play with the paper and test it out with staff and throw everything at it. And same thing with the paints. I've, I've tested a lot of different paints uh, and I'm still pretty particular. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's always a slow development. <laughs> yeah. It, it sounds like a, a fascinating part of your job though, right? I mean, it's kind of, that's the thing with being an entrepreneur, right? You have your fingers in a little bit of everything, but uh, just that whole concept of 
trying to research paint companies you wanted to partner with and how it's going to work and what the materials are and what it feels like and how creamy is it and all that kind of stuff. That's kind of a cool thing to have to do in your basic day-to-day -day work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> only a small part of it. <laughs> yeah, but... I kind of like talking to people better, but uh, I, you know, that part has to be done. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. How have you yeah. found with the with the shows this year or selling online? What's it been like for you as an artist? If you don't mind me asking, I've been very curious about it. Yeah, you know, I, I think I think like a lot of artists, I was actually quite prepared uh, when, when everything shut down to have a, a lot of free time and time to maybe do more exploration and stuff. <clears throat> but it's been really busy. Like I think, you know, people staying at home, looking at their walls. Um, I think that people have disposable income that they haven't been spending on travel and dinners out and stuff like that. Um, I think that's certainly been part of it and it's helped um, artists continue to sell. I, I know artists who, you know, this, they've had some of their best years mm. um, since COVID. Um, one of the other things I'm finding is that uh, people are really getting way more involved in commissions. And I think partially that's just because they want to be part of a creative process and something that's different and intellectually fun and interesting that kind of takes them away from kind of the the reality that this pandemic has kind of put us yeah. into so i'm um, getting supplies is a challenge like there um i have one commission that uh, i started i think in january and i'm going to be maybe hopefully getting the panel in july june or july mm -hmm. um and the people are patient and they're kind of aware that that's the way it's going to happen so I've had a couple of others where they're like, they want this size. I'm like, yeah, but if you did that size, I could get it to you within like a couple of weeks or a month as opposed to five months, you know? So. Yeah. I think that's always been the challenge with, with artists uh, in getting that, you know, they want to come, people want a commission, but they don't necessarily want to wait for it. And I always say art, you got to be patient. I mean, if you really want it, yeah, it'll take a little bit longer, you know, why not? You know what yeah, you're it's getting. Just, it's just hard when it's like, okay, so we've committed, we know what we want to do, and now it's going to be six or eight weeks before I can even get the panel to start, right? And then, you know, oh, well, I seem to not be able to find titanium white anywhere or something stupid like that, right? But, um, yeah, I think we're all kind of working around that. Um, I think that there are some pieces, uh, some artists that seem to be um, better able to sell online. Mm -hmm. I think like for me, it's kind of my stuff doesn't really document very well online. Um, and I think that it looks very simplistic digitally. And the nice thing is normally then when people come to these shows, and they're like, oh, my goodness, I didn't realize you could see the wood grain. I didn't realize all this level of detail and the texture and everything. And so that's right. fine because it kind of brings people on. Whereas we don't have the, quite the same opportunity now because all they see is the digital. So, mm. but like you, I've done, you know, FaceTime calls from people in, you know, San Diego and looking at their house and trying to figure out the pictures and sure. so yeah I think um, it's been interesting I think it's pushed I think for me I think it's pushed me you know to do things like talking to artists which has been something I've wanted to do for a number of years but never really quite had the impetus to do it um, you know I have my online store just for my little treasures which again I've been thinking about for a long time but there was really no specific deadline and so I think right. this kind of just galvanized me a bit well, that's good. I, I, I like the way a lot of artists have transitioned. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that so all the shows are going to be virtual this year, which is unfortunate, but uh, hopefully it won't still stop, you know, people from visiting. Well, and I think that, so I know that with the Riverdale Art Walk, um, we're kind of looking at hopefully doing like a tent tour so people can actually set up tents outside uh -huh. of their, like so that you can still be safe at the end of your driveway and sure. have the tent open so that people can still kind of come out. Um, I believe Toronto Outdoor is looking at doing the um, same thing at Stack, like there's limited number of artists to be able to try and get, um, you know, people in, people in front of the art, which is great idea. Good. Great idea. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, everyone's hoping as more people get vaccinated, maybe September will be good. Like, honestly, there's probably about 4,000 shows that are in September now. <laughs> Everything's been transferred over. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. As long so. as it'll be a busy summer in some way. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it'll be, well, it's, it's unpredictable, right? Like, it's kind of like, oh yeah, we can do this show. Oh, now it's going to be canceled or now it's going to be postponed or we don't know or the format's going to be different. So I think right. that, you know, we've learned to have, to have to kind of be pretty okay with a lot of uncertainty, right? Yeah, yeah. That's all you can do. But yeah, I think it's been fun. I mean, it's for me also just purely selfishly, it's given me the opportunity to spend, you know, months up at the cottage, which I've never been able to do before, um, which has been really lovely. Well, I love the pictures. 
Thanks. Yeah. I, it's so funny because I was talking to Julia Beaster the other day because I'm like, yeah, I think I'm screwing up my Instagram followers because I think you have too much nature stuff. Like, you look at your, I don't even know what you do anymore. No, no, no. That's okay. I like it. <laughs> I like it too. But I guess I just have to manage it a bit better. This is where I'm not so good with the, like, the structure of, you know, like what I should be doing versus what I feel like doing. <laughs> I, I think you got to stick to what you feel like doing. And yeah. that, that's, I think naturally people will just be drawn to it no matter what. Yeah, I think so. I like it. I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty amazing here. So I'm pretty happy about that. But uh, equally looking forward to seeing all the people in real life too. So same, same. Yeah, you are exactly the same. Yeah. So I always like to end up every interview with uh, if money, time, pandemic were no issue, what would your big hairy ass goal be? A vacation. Away. <laughs> How long has it been since you've had one? Uh, oh, my goodness. Um, well, we were here last summer, so I, I think it's been a year and a half. Yeah. At least a year and a half. And where are you looking to go? You know what? I am not sure. I, I have a list. I mean, on Instagram, you get intrigued. I get intrigued by a lot of places, and I'm sort of thinking Hawaii looks awfully pretty. I'd mm -hmm. love to go back to Paris. Um, yeah. I, and right now, if I could get on air, I'm not even sure about the airplane part of it. So if I'm just thinking where I'd like to go, it would just yeah. be somewhere. Even in Ontario, I would love to just be able to drive somewhere. But uh, I have no idea what we're going to be doing. Yeah, yeah. So it's travel. Absolutely. Yeah, me too. Well, you know, because I was supposed to be going to Egypt, Morocco, and Mexico in this oh, past wow. year. I know. And uh, yeah, I'm sure I've said it a thousand times so everyone knows, but Egypt is one of those countries I've wanted to go to since I was a small kid. And this is the third time I felt like I've been close and can't get there. <laughs> so, yeah. well, you, you'll get, you'll get to it. I will. And I will just enjoy it that much more because I've waited exactly. so long. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I look forward to the pictures. <laughs> yeah. That should be fun. <laughs> yeah. I'll be totally inspired. Like when we went to Turkey, like, you know, the colors were just so different. So of course, all of a sudden I recognize, oh yeah, I'm absorbing all of these Turkish colors and stuff into my work because it was just, uh, you know, so inspiring and the landscape's inspiring. And That's what it should be. That's really mm -hmm. what it should be. I think so. Yeah. You know, at this age, I kind of feel like I've got the material things that I want. So I want the experiences and I want to travel and I want to spend time with people I love. And that's kind Anytime, of Kate. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> Okay, let's travel together. <laughs> All right, we probably have a good time. <laughs> Not almost cousins. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay, well, it's been really fabulous. Thank uh, you. you. And your Instagrams are on Monday mornings, right? Yeah, Monday at 12. Monday at 12. Okay, yes. yeah, that's cool. I can catch them when I can. I tend to catch more of the, uh, the ones that are actually after they've been posted. But No problem. Uh, I love chatting with you and I uh, can hardly wait to go in there and listen to the creaks of your floors and smell the amazing, unique Gortzman smell. That Thank you. Storm. I look forward to seeing you. Okay. Sounds great. Right. We'll talk Take to care. you. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.